All right, everybody. So today's lesson is going to be all about robotic sanding. If you haven't sanded with a robot before, you're in for a treat. Okay, the first most important thing to understand is when you're sanding with a robot, I mean, this is just like this. It's just like your arm holding a sander on the end. So whatever you can do comfortably with a palm sander, I guarantee you the robot will be able to do the same. The number one question we always get is people want to say, I want to see it. Can it sand my parts? I want to see it sanding my parts. And I just have to keep saying, if you have a person doing it now, guaranteed this will sand your parts. So let's get into some of the fundamentals of sanding with a robot. How can we affect the outcome when we're sanding? And there's only a few factors. The first factor is, of course, speed. Do you want the robot to go fast or to go slow? When you're sanding with a person, you have no choice but to overprocess everywhere. You'll notice a person sanding is very erratic. Lots of passes, some here, some there, some here, sometimes 10 here, two here. And, and we have to just keep sanding until it feels right. But with a robot, we can set the exact pace that that sanding comes out exactly perfect every time. So here's an example of the robot, and we would consider this going relatively quick in a sanding operation. It's pretty rare that you'd be going this fast. And the exact opposite here. This would be going really slow. It would be extremely rare to be sanding anything this slow unless you were really working to get some defects out. So the next way we can affect the outcome of this is we have the speed, we can set the perfect speed, we can also set how many passes. And unlike a person doing random passes, we're going to set exactly how many passes it takes to do the job perfectly. Now the next way is simply how hard are we pushing? Remember, with a robot, we tell it exactly how hard we want to push and it maintains that throughout the entire sanding process. So if you just want to skim your parts, no problem. If you want to add a little pressure, no problem. The only thing I will warn you is it's usually the sandpaper that dictates how hard you push. You really don't want to be pushing hard on sandpaper because it just creates heat and wears out really quick. Um, generally, it's designed to operate under the weight of your average sander. However, with a robot, you do have those options to push hard or to take the pressure off. Listen to the sound on this pass. Compared to this. So when you're assessing your options, I mean, it's like that old saying, uh, there's not a million ways to skin a cat. Same thing, we can go really slow and just get the job done, or we can go really fast, but twice as many passes. Now, the next one is grit selection. I mean, this is a piece of 240. If this isn't doing the job, you can always go finer. If you find that maybe you're sanding through or it's too aggressive, just like hand sanding. But with a robot, we find that your grit selection is a little bit different from when you're hand sanding. So don't be afraid to try different grits. Say if you're sanding primer, Oh, we've ne we never use 400 grit uh, sandpaper. We are always using 320, but the 320 is a bit aggressive with the robot. Don't be afraid to try a grit higher or lower. Mess with the grits. That's your other option for getting the optimal finish. So if you remember these four attributes, the speed, the number of passes, the pressure, and the grit selection, in that one of those combinations are going to give you the result you're looking for. You want to take a combination of those and dial in your recipe for what you're sanding. Number one most important thing to remember, this is just this. This is an extension of this through your mind. We take what your knowledge, talent, and expertise, we put it into the computer with those four principles, those four factors, you will be able to dial in the machine to get the results that you want. Before we sign out on this, let's work through a couple of scenarios together. 
So what would you do if you sat at the panel and then you looked at it and you could still see some orange peeling on the surface? So in the case of orange peeling, remember the four factors. We have speed, how many passes, the grit, or the pressure. So which ones do we want to start adjusting? I would say the pressure is a no-go. Unless you can tell that it's not, you know, it's not touching the board, then I would, I would bring it down. But the pressure, you don't want to push hard and have it grinding away. You don't want to hear that rawr, bad sound. You know what I'm talking about. So then we can increase the number of passes. Maybe if it's doing two passes, just make it do four. And that might get you the result that you need. You could also slow down the robot. Remember, you control the speed to it's infinite so you could just slow it down until it's doing the amount of sanding you require or the other option would be your grit you could just go down a grit say you're sanding paint with 320 maybe go down to a, a 240 or 220 and that might also get rid of if it's an orange peel situation or not sand it as much as you'd like it to but out of those options if it were me personally i would probably make sure you don't have too much pressure, but you have enough. And then I would probably go for the speed. I would just slow down the machine until I was getting the finish that I wanted. If, if that was getting me some sand throughs or I wasn't thrilled with that, I would then speed the machine back up and I would probably just go for more passes. Provided it's a grit that you're comfortable with and you know has worked in the past, I would probably leave that one alone. So typically speaking for that scenario, I would go after the speed. Scenario number two, let's talk about what happens if you're getting sand throughs everywhere. You're sanding the paint, you're like, oh my God, this machine's sanding through everywhere. No, the machine is not sanding through everywhere. Your settings are causing the machine to sand through everywhere. So let's talk about those four things again. Which ones are we gonna go for? Maybe if it's sanding through everywhere, I, I'm like checking right away to make sure, is it pushing way too hard? And you know how you could do that is you just slowly raise up the machine till it's not touching the part and you can see it's not touching and then slowly come back down until you can hear that nice sound that the sander makes when it's set up properly. Then I would take a look at my speed. Am I going too slow? I would just speed that up. I would just keep going faster and faster and faster until it wasn't sanding through. Next option would be my grit. If I was sanding paint Everybody's paint's different, every supplier's different. So generally speaking, um, I would go up a grit. So if I was sanding with 320 and I was getting sand throughs, maybe it's a wash coat, you're sanding a dark wood with sealer. Uh, I would go up to 400 and I would see if the sand throughs go away at that level. Is it possible that something's wrong with the machine? Absolutely. Not that it's fundamentally broken, just that we need to tweak the setup. So let me give you an example of some indicators that the rotation compensation is not set up right. So if we look at this high-tech sketch, if you have a sand through happening here and here, there's a good chance that the sander, the sander is tilted this way. So you will notice along this edge, it's not sanding, it's not sanding, but it's sanding through here and here. I would go for the rotation compensation and just tip it back a little bit until you got an even sand. The same thing could be happening from front to back. If you're getting sand through here and here, then you know the sander needs to tilt forward. But here's the trick, not the trick. The thing that tricks you is, let's do it the other way. Let's say you get a sand through here and here. Let's talk about getting a sand through here and here. Now, how do you adjust that? This is a bit of a trick question because if you adjust to fix one side, you're gonna make the other side worse. So in the case of getting contradicting sand throughs, that would be a key indicator. It's not the machine, it's your part. So maybe the panel that you're putting on is warped or some, something else is going on, but be careful 
when you're getting little sand throughs here and there that you're not chasing that rotation compensation all over the place you could you could really get lost in that and spend days trying to figure out how to get it right when it's a bad part and if you're setting it up on a bad part then you can imagine every part will be different so you'll be getting a different result on every part so careful with that always assume it's the part first and prove it's the machine also very important to when you're getting any kind of defect that you're not happy with make sure that that defect is repeating don't see it once on one panel and then get in there and start adjusting everything you know make sure that you take that say oh that's weird take that panel off and make sure that exact problem repeats exactly over and over and over again if it's the exact problem repeating over and over again then we can look towards the machine because it's going to do the exact thing over and over and over again but if that defect is wandering then we got to start analyzing the incoming parts let's take a look at another scenario let's say that you're sanding that back edge and for whatever reason, it's not quite touching the edge here, but it's doing a pretty good job of the edge over here. So it appears as if the robot is moving on a slight angle and sanding here and not sanding here. And of course, everybody wants to blame the machine. But remember, that head is in there, that head is floating, and it's, it's also vertical when you're sanding the edges. So what I would do in that case is just slowly bring that head in and in and in until it is sanding evenly across the whole edge. And the exact same thing works on the surface of the door as well. Like let's say it's sanding here and not sanding there. So um, everything's backwards, cool. So that's an upside down check mark. So let's say it's sanding in this area, but it's not quite sanding in this area. In that case, I would just bring the machine down a little bit to compensate for that because we don't know. The thing we know is the robot is moving exactly flat. We don't know what where our panels are at. So we rely on that floating head to catch all of those low spots. So you want to adjust the sander inside of that range where it floats that it's sanding the entire surface, even the low spots. You want to kind of set it up at the low spot and then it'll just float up around the high spots so there you have it robotic sanding 1a1 remember speed pressure passes and grit and you'll be fine